Hello and welcome my fellow Homo Sapien friends and today we are doing a State of Decay 2 video. Now obviously if you have the Xbox 3 Pass you can play this for free. This doesn't cost you anything, this is pretty much what I've done. So if you still haven't used that 14 day free trial I suggest that you go do that. Especially with this game because it's absolutely so much fun. And don't just take my word for it, I'm sure there are other people out there who have played this. I know a lot of my friends have got this right now. I don't know whether that's because I've got it and they're just like playing games with me, I don't know. But it's so much fun, especially with friends. So if you do have quite a few friends, it plays up to about four characters, I think it is, to each community. So if you've got up to three friends that you want to play with, then this is a good game to get into that. But honestly, I think the real reason my friends download games that I play is so they can end up in my YouTube videos. That's definitely what it is. See, I know your game, guys. I know your game. But anyway, let's get into why this is a really good game. So you have to build and maintain a community by building food gardens, silos and rain collectors for water, build an infirmary to cure and make medicines, build beds and so on and so forth. So you get the general idea, everything that you need you have to build. However, it depends on the size of your base. So this is something to take into consideration when you rescue survivors and bring them to community because obviously the more people that you have in your community the faster your resources will go down and the harder it is to survive obviously like it would be if it actually happened in real life so be careful on who you take back to your community make sure they have a, a skill that's worth having because what i did I, I just because i'm such a nice guy Basically what I've done is I've rescued fucking everyone and my base is too small for the amount of people in it So you get a lot of complaints like your morale starts drop dropping and you, people start getting depressed and stuff like this And you're fighting amongst each other. I mean there are ways to raise morale obviously get a bigger base That's that's your main one. You can also build more beds so people can actually sleep it's, it's it is quite hard to find food resources but that is ideal if you can stock up on those i mean if you are going out it's always best to take a vehicle with you and someone else from your community like you can see in the background here that i'm not actually playing with any friends i've just got someone from my community to come help me so that while i'm scavenging they can have my back and fend off any zeds that start attacking me it's always nice to have someone there when you're trying to scavenge because the Zeds just pop up from fucking anywhere. Honestly, like, I was. Th there's been a few occasions where I've been trying to scavenge for stuff, and there's one li literally right behind me. But luckily enough, you can hear them because they all make noises. They all always do that, like, sort of zombie groan, you know, like, uh, and stuff like that. Obviously, that's my, that's not my best zombie impression, but you, you get the idea. Now, like with most games, you have your special infected, and these are sort of like harder zombies to kill, where they've, they've been mutated to such a degree that they've gained new abilities, so they are harder to take down. So, first of all, you've got the Juggernaut, which is like a giant fat zombie that is so strong, and it will charge at your car, and it will actually dent it and take doors off and stuff like this, so... I would advise not running into this zombie because I did it before and it actually dented the front of my car. So it, it does more damage to your vehicle than it does to the, the uh, juggernaut. So the best thing to do is obviously aim for the head. Aim for the head with everything because that's the fastest way to kill anything. I think it takes around about, depending on what weapon you have, it takes around about six to eight shots in the head for a juggernaut to go down. And then you have to jump on his back and stab him in the head. So be wary of that. There's also a bloater, which pretty standard with most zombie games uh, bloater basically it explodes when it's either near you or uh, once you've killed it so try to stand way back from that because it emits like a green fog that does harmful damage to you you also have the feral now these little bastards are so fast honestly i'm not even kidding they they run on their hands and feet and they are rapid they could probably keep up with your car so it is worthy like trying to either like kill it but killing it is like trying to take down one of dark soul bosses or a bloodborne boss they just dodge everything that you fucking fire at them and hitting them and does pretty much nothing it just be prepared like you can see in the background here look you see it just running in the back fucking so scary me honestly and there's a juggernaut right on cue this this thing is terrifying you could like if you near it as well it shakes your controller because it's it pounds the floor with its feet oh it's so rapid um obviously the last one that i found is a screamer 
Now, this one's pretty much self-explanatory. It screams and it alerts nearby zombies to your location and it just swarms you. So always better to take these down first if you can because these will do more damage to you and everything else around you. So it is so it's quite wise to take down those first. So at the beginning of the game, you get to choose a character. Just one, just one character. And obviously, as the story progresses, you go out, find new characters, and add them to your community. Now, this is a good thing about having so many people in your community, because what will happen is the character that you're playing as, like, like for instance, in the background here, I'm playing as Tariq, which is a, a character that you can play as. And obviously, the blue bar is his stamina, and the red bar is his health. The longer you play with these characters, the more it deteriorates to nothing so it gets really tired and you can have like crack ribs and concussion and you can actually get infected as well so it is worth having the infirmary there but once it gets this low you need to swap characters because they need the rest once they've had the rest and stuff like this and had time to heal they can be playable again so having a big community does help in that sort of way where you have the option to pick and choose who you want to be with like if you only have two or three people it would be very difficult to have them rest because it takes a while for them to rest I think it takes like a near enough a full day to rest a character so it is quite handy having more than one now as I said earlier there is a, a morale bar now obviously you can clear this up by building bigger bases as I said but there are also infestation areas that will pop up randomly throughout the map now clearing these will actually improve the morale of your community it's quite strange but basically what infestation areas are are areas where there is accumulation of mass zombies so clearing these areas out stops the spread of them so if the longer you leave it like the bigger the infection of zombie is around the area so just be a bit wary of that so try and take those down as soon as possible like in the background here this is a point that i'm going to another uh, raise in a second but the game is actually quite glitchy now this is one of the biggest problems i think the game has that it is quite glitchy i'm sure this will be fixed in a patch but you can see in the background here look, the the woman in the back seat is obviously twitching and, and and just phasing out and stuff like this this is one of the glitches there's obviously uh, invisible zombies especially the bloaters I've noticed there's been quite a few bloaters where I've just stood next to it. It's been on the map, but I've not been able to see it. And then all of a sudden it explodes and emits that green gas and I start choking. So it is a bit glitchy, but give it time. I'm sure they'll fix this problem eventually. Another great feature in the game is that your weapons actually break. Now, obviously you're thinking, how is that a great feature if your weapons break? But it just gives that realism to the game. Like if you have a, a machete, for instance, and it breaks, it actually shatters. You can actually see it shattering on the zombie. Now you can fix these, but you have to build a workshop or find somewhere to fix it these obviously cost little bolts so make sure you've stocked up on bolts and stuff like that obviously you have a supply cache in your base and you can obviously build outposts as well which will have them where you can switch characters as well so try and stock up as much as you can on everything even if you have to just put it in your supply cache or uh, the trunk of a car just anything like that because obviously there are different vehicles in the game and each vehicle has a, a different size boot like it would in real life really so if you are finding it hard to keep stuff on your person then it is quite handy to put some stuff in the boot especially like materials and stuff like this so you'll have like food medicine uh, ammo bricks to build stuff these are all really handy things to put in your boot so you can keep carrying more and obviously taking back to your base once you're full it is really handy to have that sort of skill and inventory space because there is so much like to loot that you cannot carry it all i think the maximum amount of room you could probably have if you find it is eight eight slots for you. well no actually we'll say about 12 12 no yeah about 12 maximum slots because you get your pockets as well um so and then you have like your weapons and stuff obviously which you can carry on you so yeah like there is quite a few slots that you can have but obviously your inventory you carry like ammo and stuff like this so it makes you think about what you really need to take with you so always plan ahead before you leave your base that's that's probably my biggest tip for you plan ahead before you go anywhere now i have rambled a bit on this video but i wanted to get all the details in because i know a few people at work are not sure about buying the game so i want to try and sell it to them if 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 you were that this is actually a really good game and it's good game with friends too i mean i i, I am playing it quite a lot at the moment so let me know in the comments down below if you if you're interested in buying this if you've got it already and let, let me know if you think that I've missed something as well. I mean, look at that shot. I mean, that is amazing. 
I'm glad I left that in the video because that was fucking so good. Like, I literally just ran over the zombie, took his head off, and the helmet landed in the boot. Now, I mean, you can't get better than that, can you, really? But anyway, I digress. I just, I just thought I'd mention that while the video was there. So, thank you very much for watching this video. If you did like it, please hit that like button and obviously subscribe if you want to see more from me. Don't forget to hit that bell because YouTube's being a bit funny at the moment. So, yeah, just make sure you hit that and you should get a notification every time I post a video. I know it hasn't been working for some people, but it has been working for others. So, please take care of yourself and others and bye-bye for now.